Okay, welcome back. Look familiar? So, today I got my coffee, so we're going to look over chapter two. So this is going to be the start of chapter two. So last time we finished chapter three and we had gone over experimental design, uh, vocabulary, all about statistics in general, so we covered a lot, okay? So please, please make sure you study chapter one, okay? And to make sure you understand everything up till now with chapter one material, okay? So we're gonna start diving a little bit into the statistics and how, how to graph, right? So we talk about sampling data, collecting data, um, bias, all those good stuff. Now we're gonna talk about how do we display data. Um, we're gonna talk about how we calculate statistics. Uh, what are the specific statistics we're gonna deal with? Uh, so, so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to start with frequency distributions. What are they? How do we construct them? And so on. Okay, got my coffee? We're ready to go. Okay, so before we start with uh, frequency getting them, we're gonna, I'm going to make a note on rounding. Okay, so rounding. Okay, I'm going to write this first and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is that when it comes to rounding, you want to make sure that whatever you're calculating, that your final answer goes out one more decimal place to the right than what is present in the original data. So, for example, if I look at the original data that I'm collecting, and it's all whole numbers, then I want my answer to whatever calculation I'm doing to go out to one decimal place, okay? If my, the original data goes out to one decimal place, then whatever I'm calculating, my final answer should go out to two decimal places, and so on and so forth, okay? And I'm gonna make note of this as we do some calculations. I'll come back to this to remind you, and so you'll get an example as we're doing some of these, okay? But I wanna make that note. Um, the other note that I want to also may, uh, let you know is this. Okay, so what I'm saying here is what you don't want to do is round. So again, I'm going to show you examples of this as we go on, but as you're calculating a statistic, you don't want to round your answer at every step of your calculation because some of these calculations are going to have multiple steps. What you want to do is keep the number in your calculator and when you get to your final answer, whatever your final answer turns out to be, then round. Okay, so there's two parts of this as far as rounding, okay? Make sure you pay attention to both, okay? 
Um, so main thing is, is uh, we look at the original data. So always um, carry your final answer one more decimal than what is present in the uh, original data. And then also, don't round your answer at each step of your calculation, but just round at your final answer. Okay? So that's two notes I wanted to make sure that I touched upon. Okay. So the next thing is, is we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about ungrouped frequency distributions, and then we're going to talk about grouped frequency distributions. Now I'm going to use examples to teach you how to do this and what I mean. Okay, so I'm not going to write down definitions. I'm going to talk. So again, pause the video if you want to make any notes, write down any definitions or anything like that. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an example. I think this is going to be the easiest way to go through this is we're going to talk first about ungrouped frequency distributions. So ungrouped. Okay, key ungrouped. What does that mean? It means that we're not going to take our observed values and group them into groups of numbers in a range. Okay? We're just going to take the values as they are, okay? as they present themselves in the data. Okay? So I'm going to use an example of this, but the main thing to keep in mind is what is the range of the data? This is pretty much um, the simple rule to follow. Okay? Usually it's a small range. If it has a small range, we're, gonna, we're not going to want to group, okay? So ungrouped, the range of the data is small. What's small? Uh, there's really no rule of thumb. Um, usually like 11, 10, or less. Uh, you're not going to want to group. Again, you'll see why, but anything, what I would do is anything less than 10. If the range of the data is anything less than 10, you're probably not going to want to group. But if it's bigger than 10 by a whole bunch, then you'll want to group. And I'll show you examples of that again. So let's use this example here. So here's an example, and we're going to use this. Here, let me do this. Let me erase this. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so here's, here are the values of x. Here's my data set, okay? Okay, so there are 20 numbers. So again, always double check to make sure you didn't miss anything. So 20 numbers. So my data set has a sample size of 20. So we're going to get to this later, but might as well introduce it now. So in this case, n is 20. So n is the sample size. n is equal to 20. Okay, lowercase n is the sample size. Okay. So the range, so range is by capital R, and the range of the data set is the maximum value minus the minimum value. That's it. So the maximum value is 8, and the minimum value is 2 in this data set. So the range is equal to 6, less than 10. 
So we're not going to group this data. We're going to just leave the values as they are. We're not going to group any of them. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct my histogram, or not histogram, uh, my frequency table. Histograms come later. And a table. Remember, frequency distribution is just a table. One side is going to be x, usually the left. That's my data values. These are my observed values. And the right side is going to be frequency, which is denoted by a lowercase f. Okay. So frequency. What is frequency? Again, this is what you're going to want to write down. Frequency is just how many times does a particular value of x occur. So basically, you're just counting. Okay. So what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to write down all the numbers in my range. So it goes from 8 to 2. So I'm going to start with 2, and I'm just going to go down by 1, or up by 1, you should, I, I should say, until I get to 8. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I don't want to skip any. You don't skip any numbers. OK? OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the frequency. So the first thing we do is I'm going to go through and see how many twos I have in the data set. So how many twos do I have? And the way I would do this is I would cross these off in different ways so that way I don't get confused. So I'm going to take my marker here. I'm going to cross these off. So twos. So I've got a two here. One, two, three. So that's three. So I got three here. So my frequency for two is three. Now I'm going to go to the threes. I'm going to cross all the threes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross the threes off going the other way. Okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So my frequency is five. And so now I'm going to go to the fours. So how many fours do I have? Now I'm going to cross them off going vertical. Okay? So one, two, three, so I got three, and five. Now I'm going to go through the fives and I'm going to cross them off horizontally. So five, let's see how many fives I got. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the frequency is six. Now I'm going to go to sixes. These I'm going to circle. Okay. So sixes, how many sixes do I have? I've got one, Two. And sevens, I'm going to put a box around. So any sevens? Well, no sevens. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to put a zero for the frequency. Okay? So that's why you don't want to skip numbers just because they're not in the data. Okay? That's going to be important. And then now the eights. Now the eights, I'm going to put a box around since I didn't use it. So eight. How many eights do I got? I got one. And that's it. Everything else is crossed off. So I got one. So now, here's what I'm going to do. Now here's what I'm done. That's my frequency table. Okay. So this is my frequency table. So if I ask you to construct a frequency distribution, an ungrouped frequency distribution, that's it. I'm done. This is it. Complete. Full credit. Okay. The only thing I'm going to tell you to do to check is remember, how many numbers did I have? How, how big is my data set? 20. What should the frequencies add up to? 20. So let's check. So 3 and 5 is 8. 8 and 3 is 11. 11 and 6 is 17. 17 and 2 is 19. 19 and 1 is 20. We're done. So we got it. So we're good. We're finished. OK? That's it. That's how you do ungrouped frequencies. So now let's talk about grouped frequencies. OK. So we're going to talk about grouped frequency distribution. So again, used when the range of the data 
is large. Again, typically, large is going to be maybe 15, 20, more than that. I mean, it's going to be significantly more than 10, I would suspect, okay? So again, here is another example. I'm going to erase this just so I have room. Okay, so I'm going to write the numbers, and then, again, um, I'm going to create the, I'm going to go through the steps, so again, Make sure you pay attention to the steps I go. Okay, so here's here's the example. Okay, so here's x. Here are my here's my data set. Okay. Okay, so again, let's count just to make sure I have the right numbers. So I got so I got 28. So I have 28 numbers and yep, I have 28 numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the range, right? So let's see what the range is. And the uh, biggest number in this data set is 34. Okay, so 34. And the smallest number in this data set is 5, which is right here. Okay, so 34 minus 5 is 29. So which is much bigger than 10. So in this case here, we're going to group it. Okay. So why? Because I definitely do not want to list all of the numbers from 5 to 34. That would be too big of a table. Does that make sense now? So in this case here, we're going to want to group values together into what we call classes. Okay, classes are like buckets. That's what's going to, the classes are going to determine what's going to be in a group, what, what we're going to group together. Okay? Okay. So... In this case here, they tell us they want five classes. Just want to make sure that that's what they want to do. Yeah, they want five classes. Okay, so they want us to use uh, five classes. Okay, so that's what they tell us. So now, before we do this example, let me give you the guidelines for um, constructing a grouped frequency distribution. Okay, again, I'm going to read these and explain them to you, but write them down at your leisure. Okay, so here are the guidelines. You want no more, you want, you want no less than five, no more than 20 classes. So anywhere from 5 to 20 classes is a rule of thumb, okay? Less than 5 would be too, you're not going to get a good feel about the distribution, okay? Again, the same thing for going more than 20. You're going to spread the data out too far to be meaningful. So if you have too few classes or too many classes, you're going to lose meaning in the data, okay? 
Uh, the other guideline is you want your classes to be mutually exclusive. What does that mean? No overlap. You don't want classes to overlap. Okay. The other thing too is uh, you want all inclusive. What does that mean? All inclusive means that all of the data falls into one of the groups. Okay. So you don't have any stragglers. You don't have any data at the end that's that's left out. Okay. And it's also continuous. Means no gaps. Now I know in the homework on the Excel. It'll tell you at the end, which I haven't fixed yet, but I plan on changing it. But if, if it asks you to construct a histogram, you don't want gaps. And again, I'm going to create another video if I don't get to a class, but I'm going to create a video. I'm going to have a whole string of videos for the Excel assignments. So just um, be aware of that, okay? Or go look at the Excel assignments if they're on there, the videos I have for Excel assignments to get more information about how to do that. Okay, but we don't want any gaps um, between classes. Okay. Um, oh, and equal width. We want our classes to be equal width. Okay, and that's again going to come up in the history when we do histograms and stuff. Again, I'm going to do this example, and it should all be clear. Okay. Okay, so let's continue on. So here's what we're going to do. So the range is 29. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what our class width is going to be. Okay. So our class width is going to be determined. We're going to use our range and the number of classes. So this is important. They have to, in order to get the width, they have to tell you how many classes you're going to deal with. Okay. Or you have to pick the number of classes you're going to deal with. Okay. Again, five to 20. So now there are five classes. So here's how we're going to do the class width. So this is the way we calculate the class width. It's going to be the range divided by the number of classes. Okay? The range divided by the number of classes. So what's the range here? The range is 29. We're going to divide by how many classes do they want us to have? Five. So we're going to divide by five. Well, what does that give us? Okay. Well, that gives us 1.45. Oh, hold on. Nope. That gives us uh, 5.45. Uh, 5.8. Okay. 5.8 class, uh, uh, class width of 5.8. Okay, any questions? Okay, good. Um, so now, what do we do with this? Well, we do not want to use decimals. It makes it too complicated. So what we always will do is round up to the next whole number. Always round up to the next whole number. Even if you get a whole number here. Okay? If this turned out to be 5.0, even, I would still round up to the next whole number. Why? Because it guarantees that you're not going to miss any data when you're done. Okay, so we're always going to round up. So what I'm going to do here is this is going to be rounded up to six. So the class width I'm going to use in this example is going to be six. Okay, so now here's how we do this. Okay, now I'm going to erase this, so make sure you write all of this down on a paper so you can follow along.
So what I'm going to do is now I'm, gonna, now I'm ready to construct my grouped frequency distribution. So now here's the way the table is going to work. Okay, uh, this is how you construct your table. Okay. So you're going to have three columns. Okay. You're going to have the first and second column. The first column is going to be what we're going to call your lower class limit. Okay. What's the lower class limit? That the minimum number in order to be in that class, in that group. Okay? Then this one is going to be the upper class limit. Well, what's the upper class limit? Well, that's the maximum value that an observation must have in order to be in that group. Okay? So you have your lower class limit and your upper class limit. That defines what falls into your class or the bucket, right? And the last, if you haven't guessed already, is frequency, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is how do we begin? We begin with the minimum value in the data set. Well, the minimum value in the data set was five. So your lower class limit for your first class will always start with the minimum. You could go a little bit lower if you wanted to, but again, you can always start with the minimum and you'll be fine, okay? Okay, so we could go five, right? Now, that's our starting point. Now that we have our starting point, how do we get the rest of the five classes, okay, or the rest of the next four lower class limits because we have to have five classes, right? So let's let's mark those out. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay? So there are the five classes. Okay? So we have the lower and upper class limit of each class, right? So you could say, I mean, if you want, just think about it, class one, class two, three, four, and five. Okay, you don't have to have this, I'm just for, just for observation. So how do we get the next four class limits here? Easy. Remember the class width? That's what we're going to use. We're going to add the class width to every class limit to get the next one. So what's the class limit? Do you remember? Six. So we're going to add six every time to get the next one. So what's five plus six? Eleven. What's eleven plus six? Seventeen. Seventeen plus six? Twenty-three. Twenty-three plus six? 29. Okay? That's it. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the upper class limits done. Well, where do we start? Well, if you notice, this is 11, right? So this one starts at 11. All we do is subtract 1. Okay? If we subtract 1 from this, we get 10, and that's our starting point. That's where the class limit, the first class ends, right? Remember, we want it to be, um, we don't want any overlap, right? So if I put 11 here, well, where does 11 go? Does 11 go in the first class or does 11 go in to the, upper, uh, the next class? So in order to avoid the confusion, just subtract one. So now that we got the first upper class limit, now we're gonna use the um, class limit again, or the class width the class width again. So now, 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 plus 6 is 22. Plus 6 is 28. And plus 6 is what? 34. Now, 
what was the maximum value in the data set? 34. And so 34 is included. Okay? So we're good. The minimum value is included. The maximum value is included. So we know everything is great. Okay? We know we don't have any overlaps. Right? Notice that they're always a difference of one. Okay? So now we're done. That's it. Once we have this filled out, all we have to do is now count how many go in each class. Okay? So now we start with the first one. So any numbers from 5 to 10 go here. Okay? So let's go through and count the numbers from 5 to 10. Okay, so we've got just one, okay? And 11 to 16, so we want any numbers between, from 11 to 16, so anything from 11 to 16. Seven, and actually I found another one, 10. I found 10, so this is actually two. Again, I don't have a pen, so I'm doing this by looking. I should have did this before, but uh, let's see. So 17 to 22, so 17 to 22. So 17 to 22. So I got seven here. And the next one is 23 to 28. So 23 to 28. Obviously, how many do we have? We had uh, 28 numbers, so this should add up to 28. So how many should we have here at the end? Well, this is 21 plus 2, 23, so we should have 5 that fall within this range. So let's double check. So 29 to 34. So anything bigger than 29? Uh, so 29. I should do this before class. Okay, so I got four here, so which doesn't add up to, let me make sure I have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no, I have 27. No, that's right. So it adds up to 27. So I have 27 numbers. Let me just double check. One, two, three. Oh, okay, so I must, uh, this is a different data set. Uh, I, oh, hold on a second, let me double check. So 5 to 10. So 
let's see, one, two, Twenty-three to twenty-eight. Twenty. Twenty-three to twenty-eight. So twenty-three to twenty-eight. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven. So seventeen to. 22, 17 to 22. One, two, three, oh, 17 to 22, hold on, 17 to 22. Okay, that's seven. So then 11 through 16. 11 to 16. frequency distribution. Sorry it took a little longer, uh, which happens from time to time. So again, that's just an example where you definitely want to mark things off so that way you don't uh, forget where things go. So now, if we add these up, this does add up to the 28 numbers that we started with. So this is our distribution. This is a grouped frequency distribution. And that's it. We're finished. Okay. So now, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that ends the section on frequency distributions. And next time, we're going to start doing graphs for qualitative data. That's going to be data that is non-numerical. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.